Sorry, but if you are in a ministry where your pastor is saying only me, only me, I'm going to encourage you leave now Hmm. because there have been many. I'm going to say it. There have been many predators. That is called grooming. There have been many predators that will uh, control your money, sleep with your spouse, try to sleep with you when they have that much control. My pastor is my pastor. My pastor is not my God. My pastor is not my financial advisor. And my pastor is only so much. I'm going to tell my pastor about what happens in my bedroom. Uh Uh-oh. That is how how predators Mm -hmm. can, that another spirit can enter in. Mm-hmm. So I employ all members. You have to one know God for yourself and your pastor has to be in the proper place in your life. Right. Period. And, 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 and I think uh, you just touched upon, um, yeah, drop the mic. I drop the mic. These people idols. Just drop that mic, Dr. D. And, and now watch uh, uh, Dr. Nancy jump in. It's an idol. we idolizing a lot of these people. And this is why we, I really believe that people are running into problems and a lot of mental health issues. Because right. once they see that that pastor, that evangelist, that bishop um, may have offended them, then they are all messed up. You understand? Are we, are, you know, do we have the heart? For God, or do we have the heart toward for man? Okay, I mean we should love our leadership, but we should not create them and make them an idol. And no. that and, is another form of mental mental. And let me say, and you have to discern when they are overstepping their boundaries. There you go. You have to discern that women and men of God, when pastors are overstepping their boundaries in your money. In your marriage, in your life, there are boundaries that should be boundaries. You are my pastor, but now you're crossing over because there are some unhealthy leadership who also need help. Right. Have discerning. Because can I say last thing? Go ahead. You on fire. You're supposed to be saying when you stand before God, according to the word. He is not bring. Yes, your pastor's got to answer for the blood on their hand. But when you stand before God, you've got to give an account for the things done in your mortal body. So if your pastor is grooming you for inappropriateness or whatever, you've got if you are the steward over your money, and if your pastor is stealing your money, you've got to answer for that. So you've got to have boundaries. Even in ministry, at your job, at your house, you have to have boundaries. It is you and God at the end of this day. Wait, see, you know, now listen, we have to stay focused because now you just opened up another door for me. It's true. Because, because it's true because, because I, you know, the Lord has been dealing with me with submission and authority and uh, proper authority. Okay, and by proper authority, uh, that leadership that has a relationship with God, that's not going to mislead you because you know that there is a scripture in the Bible. I I didn't know we were going to go here, but scripture in the Bible where the young prophet was on his way and the Lord told him on his journey not to stop and talk to anyone. And he stopped and spoke to a prophet. And he got killed and he lost his life. Right. Why? Because he did not obey what God had told Indeed, him to do. Better? Dr. Dion. Okay. Amen. God yes. gave him the word. No matter who you meet on your journey, you are not to stop because this is the word of the Lord. So what happened? He met a man of God who was the prophet and the prophet misled him. Now, I- now we talk about mental I want to share this. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. And I hope every leader is listening. Stop Please. it. Just stop it. Just Get stop. your mind right. Stop. 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 I'm serious. I'm serious. You know, that's why God is going to judge some of these leaders. I'm telling you. 
I'm thinking, the Bible said, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I lay hands in your name? And he going to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I don't know. It, it's a responsibility as leaders. Thank you, Dr. Dion, Dr. Val. It's a responsibility as a leader that you have to stand before God. You're supposed to be in your prayer closet and praying to God and say, Lord, show me me. First. You're coming before the people. You listen, you know when you have an issue, you know when you're taking advantage over somebody, you <laughs> know it's wrong. Now mm -hmm. stop it. You know it's wrong. No it's one li listen, an anointing on your life, you could be a prophet and you will prophesy and you will lay hands, but it doesn't mean that you're 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 freed from your past and pain and hurt and abuse, and you take that and in, into the church. And it become disastrous. So I'm saying to every leader that is listening or that want to be one, check yourself. Mm -hmm. Check yourself. That's why the Bible says in uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, people which, which are called by them. my name, mm -hmm. would just humble yourself. All right? Seek God's face. Pray. And then turn. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord will come in. Here from heaven, it will heal you. Dr. And, and, and you know what? And, and let me just say this. I know I don't want to get too much off topic, but that, that's a spirit of manipulation. Yes. <laughs> that's that's the spirit of manipulation. And and that is as of witchcraft. Okay. Yes. And and this is where mental health, I, I'm serious. This is why you have people in the church that are jacked up. I uh, come on, we need to talk about this. They are just jacked up. Because why? They are no longer focused on what the Lord is telling them, okay? And, and Dr. Dion, this is why we do need you. We do need therapists in the church. We do. Because there's so much going on in the church that it, 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 it's just people. Let me tell you something. The, the majority of people in the church need a therapist because of what's going on in the church. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to see a therapist. Right. It's okay. It's nothing and, wrong. It's okay. And I and I want to say this because Xavier, your platform reaches everyone, right? Right. And I want to say for everyone listening or that will listen, there are amazing leaders out there. Do you amazing. hear? Me? What we're addressing is if you see this, if you've experienced abuse, mm -hmm. you need to get out and get under healthy leadership, okay? And if you need to go to therapy because of what you've been through, fine. But identify it, set boundaries, get out and go under healthy leadership because there are millions of healthy leadership. They have a good relationship with their family. They don't need to prostitute or to, to steal your money, not trying to sleep with your boo or you. Right. So there are healthy leadership and you can find it. But everyone that needs help, go ahead and ask for it. Mm -hmm. Ask for it. It's okay. And the, and the thing is, I will say it does work because uh, let me give a little testimony. Coming on to do this show was just all God. Because when I was moving from the Bronx to go to Brooklyn, the Lord said to me, if, I, if, if you do the work and get healed from your past, I will, I will bless you. So I moved from the Bronx to Harlem. Everything fall into place, find a therapist. I remember from the, when we talked about mental health, the, the trauma child that was interrupted at five, six years old, that was me when y'all were talking. So when I got here, the Lord said to me, okay, you're going to do this. And the, and the Lord healed me quickly. I didn't have to wait six years. The, the, the main you. thing for me was you, I want to do the work to be healed, to go on in the next level where God yes, has to go. So I'm doing the homework. This is why I'm saying it's possible that is eight. God is able to do you to, do, to get you there. So I got the therapist. I sat down with my father one day. I said, Daddy, we need to talk. I just want you to hear me. It's no blaming game of what happened to me in my past. I just need one of my parents to hear me. 
My father and I talked for three hours. From a, as a five year, five to six year old, I remember what happened to me. I had an encounter in last July before I moved to the Bronx. The I had a vision where the younger five, six year old that was molested, my lord, to the fifty four year old that's listening to the child. Mm. I was bugging out for 45 hours, uh, 40, 24 hours. I went mm. home and I prayed and I said, I just had to rest it out. So I told my father this and I said, I'm not blaming you and mommy and dad. My parents are pastors, they're Jamaican pastors. I know you didn't protect us. Things happen. Mm. So I anyway, did, did the work, spoke to him. Daddy said, you know, I love you. My father said, he loved me. Beautiful. Regardless of what happened in my past, I can see that God is doing something new in you. You understand? Did Thank the work. You. And I think maybe like a week or two after that, the Lord said to me, okay, this chapter is closed. Your, your past cannot cripple me no further. Yes. So where he got it, he said by 54, 55, he would take me to the next level in God because I did the work. So I, this is why I'm saying, this is why I brought you out on because the Lord dealt with me to, to have this conversation. If he can do it in me, why can't these people that are so anointed, they, it's like they, you know, like how Bishop McKinley would pray, I'm preach, you know, the Greek, the Hebrew, all that, but you can't sense anything in your, in, in your spirit that's going on with you. You have to start with you first. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, I know God healed me from that. Thank and you, I Lord. tell the devil, the devil can't hurt me. My past can't hurt me because I'm going forward. He caught. Yes, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the name. Thank you, Jesus. Powerful testimony. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God you. Is a healer. Thank you. God is a healer. And he yes. is a healer. Yes, he, he is. is. He is a deliverer. Mm -hmm. He can do it. And he has. If you're well, the victim, blessed be the name. If you're the victim or if you're the one victimizing, God is a I, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. He's a healer. Yes. But you have to be first to say, I need help. I need That's help. where the deliverance comes. You have to say, I oh, need Lord. help. Mm -hmm. I'm, I went I went to counseling twice. But this time, it was a serious thing where God said to me, Christmas. And I'm sharing the testimony because I, I know I brought you, but you, we all know it here. December, God said to me, if you leave procrastination in the past, and, and evolve in, in, in the future. And if you do the work to be healed, so I'm leaving the past alone and I'm going forward. By my 55th birthday, yes, God will put a double portion of on my life at 55. It'll be a different level in ministry. So I've been getting a lot of confirmation. You're gonna be a bishop, you're gonna be a pastor. Whatever God has, I'm not running no more. I run 20 something years, I'm not running. But this is why I'm saying the clergy people, y'all have to get your minds right. I've been going to church and I've been seeing stuff that this is in the black church. I'm I, I'm no I know this is in the Jamaican church, the Caribbean church, but it's it's all the cultures we need to get our lives together. Do the work, go see, sit on somebody's couch and deal with it. Because even sitting on the couch, you have to be able to say, okay, I'm woman enough to say, let's deal with the past. Because if you have that right therapist, Dion, I had a therapist. She gave me work. Every three months, we had a goal. I had to have two books. One book I wrote, all the accomplishment that God has done and what I need help, even my downfalls, what's hurting me, what's broken me. And when I would come to her, we would talk about it. And then we'll do homework to, to leave that after you. And, I, and this is what God showed me. After I went to therapy, came home and did the work with myself. Okay. With myself. He closed that chapter. Mm -hmm. So every level in my life has been closed all these years. Yes, I know the Lord has been calling me to preach the word. I mean, I've heard pastors say you're going to preach what God has delivered you from. So that's why I'm not saying I, I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm in the place where I have to hear God. Mm -hmm. if, if, if God can do it for me, I know it can be happening to all these clergies that are out here. That's right. It's a total commitment. We can't have all we can't be spiritual dead. 
and we can't see what's going on in the church. Go ahead, Pastor Nancy. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I I agree, and I thank God. I thank God. I mean, tonight was outstanding. Yeah, I I, I so appreciate it. You know, I I just I just love these type of platforms because yeah. it shares. Um, and how we can forward it and share. And if anybody listening, they can share, share with somebody else um, to let them know, like, listen, mental health is real. Um, however, God is a deliverer and he can help you through it. Absolutely. And to recognize that there is, that if it's real, right. you, you can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to live in your past. You can live in the future and the future starts now. And now is getting help, help, help. And, 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 and God will bless you. He will free you. And who the sun set free. It's free indeed. Free indeed. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's my last point. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 